I use for my laying chickens and ducks, I get from a local meal just right around the corner. And for our layer feed, I have a non-GMO laying feed and a non-GMO scratch feed that I like to mix together. And I found that the scratch feed really helps the ducks to produce more eggs. But it's such a blessing to be able to get feed from a local farm. And this past fall, I had the opportunity to see how this feed is harvested. I had the opportunity to ride in one of the giant combines with the farmer who produces this feed. It was a hot October day, but I was really glad to be in the combine with Landon because it actually had AC in here. And as we were riding to the field that we were going to be harvesting the corn in, he was explaining that this was actually not a good year for the corn. But overall, what would you say about the corn? How's the corn? Sucks. Sucks, Sucks really. <laughs> and that's because uh, uh, we have was not, very, it was hot and dry when it was trying to pollinate. So the corn, the corn uh, plant itself was fine. Okay. But when it was trying to pollinate, we got about a week and a half, two week period there when the tassels and the silks and it needs to be pollinated and it pollinates every morning and when it's hot, dry, humid, uh, pollination doesn't occur or it's uh, sporadic and you don't get good pollination. A lot of people don't realize that this, every silk is connected to a kernel of corn. I just saw a video about that yesterday. Every <laughs> silk has to receive a pollen, a grain of pollen. Wow. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't do its thing, Nothing there. Wow. Yeah, they don't even try to really slow down much. Nope, 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 that, so, so, so here's a good reason why farmers take up the whole damn road and drive. I want to be intimidating. I want to say, y'all look, I'm big, I need y'all to slow down. Yeah. If I get in my lane and stay there the whole time, oh they go, oh look at that, he's, he's no. I want to I want y'all to slow down. It's hard to slow this thing down, it's hard to get it back up to speed. Yeah. It's easier for a car. I can totally see that now. Wow. <laughs> I and bet I was one of those the, ones to drive you off the road. And the, yeah, the other thing, I got, there's, some, there's a lot of people out there pull over, and that's fantastic. But please don't pull over adjacent to a mailbox. Oh, yeah. I can't feel them. I, you don't know how many people do that. I'm like, geez, it's a mailbox. <laughs> The best thing is pulling somebody's driveway if you feel like you can't uh, make it pile. But normally, if you just slow down and get over a little bit, everything's everything's good. <laughs> and just being in here, is, you see how much space you take up. Yeah. It's crazy. You can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> being in this combine. I could totally see the challenges that farmers face as they try to drive these things on the road because they are absolutely huge, dwarfing all the other cars and things in the area. And as we were driving, it was almost like it was raining corn as corn from the previous harvest was coming right over the front window. Got a little corn on top of the cab. That's why the corn is running off the uh -oh. top there. <laughs> Overflowed earlier. And then we arrived to the field that we were going to be harvesting in. And it was right dab in the middle of a beautiful countryside. Lexion is Paul's uh, combine brand, uh, brand. Okay. Okay. That one's not called. 
it looks like. Yeah, there's a piece of metal in there that we can flip up. I'll set it down the ground here and Dave will flip it up. Greens tell you there. I'm gonna give me my yield, my moisture, I mean bushels I've cut. So we're really not, you know, a lot of people say, are you cutting corn yet? Well, we really don't cut corn, corn's never really cut. If I go slow, watch the head, you'll see those stalks, stalks they're actually pulled down straight to the ground. And the ear snaps off of it. Oh, wow. A little bit of the stalk goes in the, in the compound. Apparently, the stalk is actually on the ground. They just get pulled down. It's because it's always snapping it off. Oh, wow. Or picking it. So, the correct term for what you're doing here is not. I'm picking, picking corn. Just picking corn, yeah. okay. Or shelling corn. Okay. This one is monitored for these my yield monitors. This one's mapping and collecting data, so I don't have to write it down. It's, I mean, it's being sent to the cloud and all my stuff's on there. So it's recording what that one's doing. Okay. That number there is the yield that we're making right now, so it's like 186. Uh, the little number in the corner is uh, 173. That's the field average so far. And the other number is the moisture of the corn. So it's running out 15%, which is fantastic. So they can go straight into a bin and you don't have to dry it enough, just cool it down. Now the aerial view on the other screen down there, yeah. was that something that runs through Google? Is that, what is that yeah, exactly? Yeah, so this iPad has got uh, data. So they're picking up Google image and we're painting on top of it. Wow, that's pretty neat. Does the best. Is it, why is it called that? Is that because the, of the flood the, areas? Yeah, or? This, this, the, this is the land that floods when we've got a lot of rain. Okay. So it's not cool when it floods when the corn's like this. Yeah. But uh, it's the best corn land. And okay. it's the only thing you can really grow. You can't grow soybeans on bottom land because uh, if it does flood, it's just growing the soybean crop. If it would flood now, I could still harvest this. It just, it would be dirty. Okay. And this variety is best for handling moisture in, in the floodplain area? Uh, no, no, this is just one of my go to varieties. It's, okay. Uh, it, it is non GMO. Okay. All my corn is non GMO.
pretty difficult to maneuver and drive or handle? Just, or? just in tight corners. Just tight corners? Yeah, other than that, I mean, there's nothing to it. And you just line up the heads here and right along the rows? Yep. All I'm doing is keeping my head, I can, I'm running my head with my thumb here, keeping it off the ground. Uh, just watching it. Now, is there a certain speed that you try to maintain and not go above, or just kind of a no, standard it's just what I feel, what I feel comfortable with. Normally around four and a half miles, mile line. You ever see anything crazy as you're doing this? Animals or? There's a bunch of rabbits. There's some rabbits. Uh, you see deer once in a blue moon and corn, not back, not too much. Okay. Uh, and watch hawks catch rabbits, that's pretty cool. <laughs> when the rabbits go out in the field. <laughs> but I've never seen nothing real crazy. And typically, how many acres can you can you shell before you get full or whatever? It all depends on the yield. Okay. So this combine will hold 330 bushels. Okay. And if we're making 100 bushels to the acre, that's roughly three acres worth. Okay. This year, how many cornfields have you had in total? I had 640 acres. Wow. And you've done how much this year so far? Um, as far as harvesting it? We like this 20 acres, and we like uh, another 30 acres down the road, that would be it. Okay. But we left about 50 acres to get cob corn, ear corn, with okay. deer hunters. Okay. So that's another machine I'll run. I'll just lift it. I'll just leave some standing and I'll, I'll uh, use it to pick cob corn. So the, what we're doing here is harvesting the corn and making it the, right. the whole corn. We're, we're doing shell corn under the grain bank. Okay. So, yeah, we'll turn it into shell corn. So how often do you have to do maintenance and repairs on this thing? Oh. I don't want to talk about repairs. <laughs> Maintenance, we grease. This, this machine's got an auto greaser on it, so long as it's full and functioning correctly, it greases most all the major parts. Okay. Uh, there's some 50 hour grease certs I got to all grease, and I probably grease them every 20 hours. Okay. And check the oils, you know, stuff in the morning and what have you. The corn head needs to be greased about every morning. Let's come, let's come, come out right there. Yeah. Okay, yep, see it now. Yeah. Yeah. Rise up. 
It was such a blast hanging out with Landon, seeing how he grows and harvests the corn that goes into a number of the different feeds for livestock. He also grows wheat, soy, and a number of other things for, for feed for chickens, cattle, pigs. But Landon, thank you so much for letting me spend time with you, as well as all that you and your family and your team does to provide feed for our animals how we can take our animals from tiny chicks and ducklings to full grown layers or meat producers 
is such a blessing and we really appreciate what you do at Barrier Meals. And if you, for those of you out there, you're looking for a place to buy feed, make sure you look around in your local area. But if you're anywhere near me in the Charlotte, Concord, Kannapolis area, make sure you check out Barrier, Barrier Meals. They provide excellent feed and we really appreciate them and all that they do.